You know, yesterday I got a chance to spend some time with uh, some senior uh, customer service representatives that were going through kind of this uh, this incubation slash graduation class at my company to grow into junior loan officers. And so these are basically customer service representatives that stood out that were good at what they did and they showed signs of progressing and wanting to actually become a loan officer. And so this was the graduating class and, and I think they had maybe like a week left before they hit the floor as a loan officer. And I learned so much just being in that in that room, which is weird because I actually, you know, held the training to help them in in learning about the craft that that we do. And so if this is if you're a new agent, if you're recently new, hell, if you're if you just got your NMLS, <laughs> NMLS license within a year, then this video is gonna be for you because I'm gonna teach you in this video what I learned from kind of that mindset that you have right now. And it reminded me so much of when I used to be in that mind state. And I hope in this video that I can open your eyes to some things that may change your perspective and thus accelerate your progress to hitting the floor running. And so again, this video is for more, more for newer agents, but even if you're seasoned, I think you can actually pick up a few gold nuggets and I'm gonna teach you what I learned from the new school. Let's go. What's up everybody, welcome back to Sales Remastered. My name is Daniel, I'm your host, and in this video we're gonna talk about a few things that I learned from the newer school. The newer agents coming into the field and one of the common, I guess the, the main trend within these questions, uh, within this focus group, and again there's about six newer um, agents, damn, they weren't even necessary agents yet. These were um, considered uh, senior customer service representatives that were going through a training session to become loan officers. And I went through kind of like a round table, so each one of them got a chance to answer or ask a question, and I and I shoot shot out the answer. And of course, I documented it, so I'm going to be able to share it with you guys uh, in the, in the weeks to come. Which reminds me, if this is your first time viewing Sales Remastered, please hit the subscription button, hit the bell, so you're notified of when those videos upload. Or if you're catching me on Facebook, be sure to go to the profile page, click the profile sales remastered uh, name tag right there and once you go to the profile page hit that thumbs up so I, I get on your feed and so anyway one thing that I learned was the common trend of overthinking and I think just naturally we tend to overthink and I, I the reason why I bring this up is because one of the common trends within the, each and every single one of the questions and you'll see in these videos is that you know obviously we kind of overthink what's to come so we are more worried about kind of the future or more worried about we're basically putting the cart in front of the horse if that makes sense instead of looking at it like where we just engulf ourselves and throw ourselves into the mix and learn as we go i think it's natural so it's not their fault i'm not saying that they're flawed because of this but i do notice the common trend of how overthinking will actually stunt our growth. And so if you're a newer agent right now and you're kind of overthinking the process, you're thinking three, four, five steps ahead, there's a fine balance of, of how to properly do that. And if you're doing it right now and you find yourself kind of overthinking the kind of the process of it all, and so you're actually psyching yourself out, then that's the part of, the, of, of, that, of that side that's actually bad for you. So it could, be, it could become a negative anchor. Whereas if you're thinking four or five steps ahead in the right way, you're actually being proactive and learning as you go. So in other words, you analyze and you critique your own self. And one of the, one of the probably the most smartest thing that I heard within this training I learned from my, you know, and I also learned was one of these new agents said that I listen to myself and which is a great sign because I think that this young lady is going to do an amazing job. She has a voice, She's, uh, she admitted she was an, a, you know, an emotional type minded person. And you're gonna find that most successful salespeople are emotional, you know, this is an emotional sport. You have to be emotional, I believe, because if you're too logical and you're too cut dry, you're, you, you gotta find that balance. It's good to be you know, a mixture of both. But of course, emotional is definitely gonna play a advantage because this is, again, an emotional sport and we have to be we have to be very good with emotions and I think that the only real way to win if you're an emotional minded 
type person is if you know how to control your emotions, you understand your emotions and you can play with your emotions. But anyway, going back to the trend is that I noticed that a lot of the questions were more focused and worried about what's to come. Like one of the questions was, you know, when I'm talking to someone new, how do I pitch them? And it it opened my eyes and, and, and kind of brought me down memory lane because when I was going into sales, I, that's all I thought about was how do I pitch this person? How do I sell this person? And not until I found a mentor and I started taking my craft very seriously did I discover that it's not really about selling, it's actually about serving. And so what we become are kind of like assistants. We just become helpers. And when we, when I started to look at things in that way, I grew an upper hand. I, I got a, a, an upper hand. I got an advantage. And it led to me delivering my message in a completely different way. And so where I guess, I guess what I'm getting at is if you're newer, if you're somewhat new to sales or you're new to being a loan officer, I want you to stop overthinking your duties and stop overthinking whether or not you're gonna fail because if you fail you gotta change the way you look at it where if you mess up or if you fail or if you flunk or brick or whatever you want to call it or make a fool of yourself look at it in a good light because you have to go through those scrapes you have to fall down once in a while and one of the things that I told these newer agents is that you want to fail fast and you want to fail often because that's the only way that you're really going to be able to perfect your craft. You know, no one, nobody came into this industry or came into your, your role and currently sits as a top producer without first going through what you're about to go through. And so they all made mistakes. We all went through the bumps and bruises. We all lost deals. We all made fool of ourselves. But the only difference is we didn't let that stop us. And we actually looked at it as kind of like a stepping stone. So we used our failures to rise above. Sounds weird, right? But what, if you think about it, like when you, you know, when you look at your process and your sales cycle, if you overthink it, you make things complicated. And I think it's human nature. We just tend to make things more complicated than they really are. And so one of the things that I learned from these newer agents is that it's, it's good to think ahead, but it's also, it can also be our downfall if we think too much about the negative side. And so where the common, when one of the trends of, of each and every question was, well, what if I sound like a fool or what if I mess up or how do I deal with the negativity? And I think that because the mindset is wired that way, we naturally are on defense. And I think the message that I was trying to share with them is that we gotta, we gotta come in, in a mindset of offense where we're, we're actually inviting. We're not, sh we're not shielded off, we're not scared of objections, but we're actually looking forward to providing the support and the help that these people need. And one of the messages that I shared with these newer agents is that, you know, when the state that they're in right now, being so new, to the industry, being so new to the sport, they have an up, they have this unique advantage over everyone else because they're coming into a sales floor that's mixed with a mass array of different experiences, right? And so they're gonna come across people that are kind of already burnt and they're gonna come across mindsets that are not as positive and optimistic as theirs. Because when you think about your sales floor, we all know those people who are just kind of negative and you could tell they don't like what they do. And unfortunately, as much as we try to ignore them, it's hard to ignore them because we can feel their vibe. You know, we could just kind of feel their resentment at life. And I don't know about you, but I don't want to be like that. And if you don't want to be like that either, then the best thing to do is really control your perception of what it is we do. Whereas I think that the negative mindsets around us look at what we do as a grind. They're, they're more looking at it from a place of greed. Like what's in it for me, right? Like, yeah, I'll make that call, but what's in it for me? Like they're not looking at it from a service standpoint. They're not looking at it from, you know, how can I bring family's value today? How can I help somebody change their life in a positive way? How can I use my expertise to help someone rise above the challenges that they're facing today? 
And if we keep that as our primary perspective, I think that our energy naturally changes and we actually attract the very things that we want because it's not just focused on what's in it for me, right? And, and I, I get it, you know, there's that fine balance because the whole point of even getting in this line of work is because there's huge upsides for us. And so, but if we let that cloud our mind, we become like those one hit wonders, right? Like the one hit wonders I'm talking about, like, you know, you, you know, like the music artists, like you saw them one hit and they just went like just baller status. And then you never heard from them again because they got, they're just too focused about what's in it for them. Whereas the artist that was more about the audience that was more about how can I change the game how can I become a thermostat rather than a thermometer like they weren't necessarily worried about the numbers they weren't necessarily worried about what people think they were more concerned they're more focused on the art of actually bringing art <laughs> so they're they're more focused on bringing value bringing a, a different view bringing an emotion they're more focused about serving, you know, um, this unique way of giving their message. And I'm using artists as an example because an artist is technically an entrepreneur, right? A loan officer is also technically an entrepreneur. Even though some of us might receive base pay, some of us might receive a draw, some might receive a guarantee, some of us don't receive any base, right? So it's kind of all up to us. And I think when we look at it in that way and say, okay, well, number one is I'm licensed to sell money. Number two is my license enables me to help others. And number three is I am learning about information that is not made to the general public. It's not typically a topic that they teach in school, you know, like sales. <laughs> You know, they teach marketing and all, but they don't teach sales. They don't teach influence. They don't teach persuasion. They don't teach negotiation. And I think that, that these are the things that we get a chance to learn every single day. And so this is gonna serve us value throughout our entire life as long as we look at it in the right light. And so my, my message to you is if you're new and even if you're seasoned, just stop overthinking things, boo-boo. Just go and, and give, you know, go give good vibes. Go serve value help somebody you know what i mean change the message to oh i'm gonna book somebody to oh i'm gonna help somebody and you're gonna you're gonna find something amazing happen where it's actually not about you anymore it's about helping people and it's not so much of a grind you're not looking at it with fear you're looking at it almost with anticipation because you really genuinely want to help somebody and so that's my message i hope you guys enjoyed the video if you did please hit the thumbs up button comment your takeaway you know do you look at your day like this if you do comment yes if you don't comment no do you look at your day as selling or serving right do you look at your day as a grind or as a hustle if you look at your day as as giving value as helping families as helping people again comment yes below but if you look at it as a grind and you look at it as kind of like this stressful sequence of actions comment no in the box i'd really love to know and if you haven't by now you know download a copy of the, uh, an updated copy of the sales script i've remastered it for the purchase agents uh, receiving inbound and outbound sales sales leads and and it's formatted in a way where you're going to be able to position yourself as the expert so you're not finding yourself having to sell rate or sell fees on your first call it's going to be about building rapport and that's how you help people within this purchase market but that's step one but you gotta master step one. And so if you wanna do that, go to salesremaster.com, download a copy of the sales script, use your personal email address, and I'll send you a copy right away. I'll see you in the next video. Bye. Now I'm up, get my whole squad up. We ain't never gonna give up. Rich is full, I could never hear. Diamonds in my ear, say this clear. I could never feel, this gonna be my year.